What's going on here? Can't a ladder man pontificate in peace? Why is the FIA doing my job? So you all know the drill. A publication called Business F1 put out a very alarming piece about the likes of the Wolves and allegedly claiming that the two were sharing information with one another about goings on within F1 via pillow talk. Yeah, I'm sorry, Business F1. You've lost me there. That kind of language, that is very, very... Ugh. By the way, these were the same guys who reported about the Apple F1 deal a while back for TV rights or something, and also the same people who made that article about trying to spice up the W series, and it's gross and distasteful and I'm not going to be sharing it here. Don't trust these guys one bit. What came after that? That's the more interesting part. There is a definite power play going on between the FIA, or more specifically Mr. Suliam, the president, and Formula One and Liberty Media. Somebody is trying to come out on top here, and I really don't think it's going to be the FIA president out of all of this, but let's dig deeper as to what we've seen in the past 48 hours. I originally dismissed this article as purely speculative. I wasn't going to be covering it on this channel, but it seems like the FIA is just going to do that for me. The FIA decided to take matters into their own hands without telling anybody about this. Not the teams or F1 themselves because they made statements saying that they were not informed. That they were going to get their compliance director. This is the same guy, Paolo Basari, by the way, who was investigating the whole situation with Lance Stroll pushing his personal trainer in Qatar. We're seeing that guy again. He's been a busy beaver this year. They're going to be using all of their resources to prove whether or not this article is true or not and whether Business F1 has a leg to stand on. But... I don't know why they really went to this level right now. Surely they could have just gone to Business F1 and gone like, hey, that, that, that source you had, what was their name again? And then they would go, oh yes, it's our trusty friend TM Bro. Yeah. Yes, I understand. This is a sort of due process. The FIA gets involved with these kinds of things if it has something to do with bringing the sport into disrepute conduct of a certain person or driver, or if there's a conflict of interest, which is the main topic regarding Toto and Susie's conduct or something. But this hasn't come from a huge big website or a very reputable journalist, or even from team principals themselves, which the article says. Team principals have gotten involved and have complained to the FIA that something is going on, which according to all the statements that were put out yesterday, they haven't. That conflict of interest that Susie Wolf could have passed on information for Toto to use and supposedly and allegedly had brought this information up in meetings with other team principals. Big journalistic websites have had to pedal back really, really fast, including the likes of Auto Motor und Sport. One of their own journalists having to come out and apologizing about that, misconstruing a completely different situation, citing potential musings that will find information about budget cap investigations and figures to do with auditing. And then, of course, we had the situation yesterday where every single team put out a statement, the exact same one, stating that they have no issue with the certain team principal, they had not complained to the FIA, and that they fully backed the likes of the managing director of F1 Academy, and they were looking forward to their involvement where they get to put their livery on certain F4 cars. I chose McLaren's one because it's basically the same as everyone else's. There was a moment yesterday, actually, that Alfa Romeo were the last ones to have put out a statement. Everyone was waiting for it, and they were going like, oh, were they the ones who complained? Because they haven't put one out yet. My personal musing was like, are we Alfa Romeo or Salba? We're not too sure which logo to use. And in the end, they just used the Alfa Romeo one because I, I guess that's the one they had to hand. But everyone was thinking this was some kind of generic AI generated piece, but this is definitely a good thing for all the teams to have done. Because think about it. If all 10 teams had put out a statement, but they were all worded differently, teams would have said one thing, teams would have said another thing, other teams might not have said something at all. And then everyone across the land, including myself, as a ladder man, many other F1 pundits and journalists out there would have been passing through all these statements and going, why did they not say something? Could they have been involved in something? Might they know something that we don't? There would have been tons of inference, people speculating all the time about the mysteries of all of these different statements. All these nine statements might have had something and they could have pieced things together and come up with the holy grail of finding out who was responsible because no one's coming forward. But no. We didn't get any of that, and this was a very good thing to do. This was a very clear sign that all the teams involved are in solidarity, that it wasn't them. They had nothing to do with this, and that they think the matter is completely bogus. That was really, really smart. All of the teams, for once, are in agreement about something. And by the way, the whole situation of Susie Wolf being the managing director of F1 Academy, 
It's not like she's been in the position since 2021 or something like that. She only just started her position in March of this year. What information would she have had? And also, the position of being the managing director of F1 Academy is a position that was created by Formula One management themselves. She does not work directly wholly with the FIA, which is what people were alluding to and in that article. And just, I still can't give a pillar talk. That is kind of demeaning, you gotta admit. And another thing, within the FIA and Formula One teams, they swap personnel all the time. The new Racing Bulls team principal, Lotto Meckis, worked at the FIA before joining Ferrari as the deputy race director under Charlie Whiting. He was the assistant director of the entire sport. There's the likes of Ross Braun. We all know where he's worked within Formula One teams. And then he went in to help spearhead the 2022 regulations and the future of F1 from a mechanical point of view. So these two organizations pick and choose different representatives all the time. They mix and match. So this is not a major, huge revelation and a first time situation where somebody, Susie Wolf, working with the likes of Williams, then Mercedes, and then being in charge of the F1 Academy, which has got nothing to do with the inner machinations of Formula One at this time. It's meant to get female drivers into the higher ranks of motorsport like F3. Well, you could easily justify it by saying the FIA had really no choice but to do so. It is within their own directives to investigate things that are a conflict of interest. But just, I feel like this could have been done in a more private and discreet manner instead of just blowing it up in front of the press and social media, everyone getting a hold of it and having their own opinion about it, like I am right now. This just doesn't really seem professional to me. This should have really been discussed in private with the respective parties before then deeming it necessary to have a proper investigation and initial assessment going into the absolute details of it. Just go to the original source and try and get your findings. I mean, come on. But the initial motive, okay, all right, but seriously, that source ain't it. To me, this is just all saber rattling on the FIA's part. They are effectively just going, we're just following the rules of the letters that we have abided to follow. Surely you could just let us do that, right? We're doing our bit. Surely you should do your bit. Because it all comes back to the Andretti situation again. The way that Mr. Suliam has been conducting himself this year is all a case of making himself and the FIA out to be the good guys. Following the letter of the law after relinquishing their stranglehold on the commercial side of Formula One many moons ago to the likes of FOM and Bernie Eccleston back in the early 2000s. With the situation regarding Andretti, you can easily tell which side the FIA are on. They want Andretti in the sport in the means of providing more entertainment, being another means of trying to get more favor with the American audience, which F1 and Liberty Media are really trying to tout as well. And they're not doing so by letting a team in, they're being a bit more resistant. So the FIA is finding it confusing and instead are trying to push it through using all the resources that they have with that whole expression of interest and then approving Andretti by it passing all of the tests that were required to be in Formula One. What the FIA are doing right now are painting themselves as the good guys. They are following the rules. They're making Liberty Media and Formula One management out to be the baddies, the selfish villains, not wanting anything else but more profits and money. But I think the FIA has gone a little bit too far with this one. The FIA under Mr. Suliam, I reckon, are tapping into the psyche that rich people are bad and that they simply want to provide more entertainment to the fans. The best way to do it is to have more teams, especially a team that has the Indianapolis circuit right in their backyard. But no, the FIA's been denied. They are facing resistance from the teams and they're trying to be the white knights and going, we're just following our own rules. We're doing it. Surely you should do it too. We think Andretti's cool, so let them in, yeah? So I think maybe turning the screw right here is what Mr. Suliam is doing. This is all speculation, folks. This is not me hurling accusations like Business F1 were doing. So you got the FIA looking at the entertainment side of things and you got FOM and Liberty Media looking at the money-making side of things. On paper, what the FIA is trying to strive for is kind of laudable and noble. What Formula One fans want is to be entertained and have a good time. Having more teams on the grid would be really interesting and more opportunities for younger drivers to get in or drivers from different formulae to have a go at Formula One themselves. And having a limit on the number of races, that is a very noble thing to have as well because 24 races, even myself as an F1 content creator, this would mean more content for my channel. I think that's just too much because this is going to put a strain on the families of mechanics and personnel and crew that go around the world for our own entertainment. At this point, it might become prudent to have two sets of personnel for every single team that change every three races or so. So that means these poor souls can have a break. 
Because I don't think Liberty Media is taking that into consideration. All I don't like is the fact that the FIA has just thrown this all into the court of public opinion. The FIA has just basically gone to the social media pages and gone, have at it, folks! Turning the screws on the likes of Liberty Media and making their lives difficult in regards to remaining silent with the Andretti bid to get into F1, which has been approved by the FIA, like I said. But wait, there might be some complications involving that. Because, supposedly, the likes of Hitech, another candidate that were looking to join the F1 grid, they might be seeking legal action regarding their failed bid, that the FIA didn't look at their bid properly, that they were able to honor the supposed $600 million entry fee, the dilution fee, to appease the existing teams. Now, could that be the reason why the whole Andretti situation has gone a bit quiet? Because we've not heard much about that, aside from Michael Andretti saying that they are now developing their facilities and their car. That's the only bit of news that we've had recently, other than the whole thing about General Motors, which in a way is its own thing. But the Andretti side? It's been relatively silent. Think about that, folks. We could get high tech as well or maybe neither. As you can tell folks, this is starting to get a little bit messy. That the FIA is looking into an investigation from a source which has a very spurious track record, and then the Formula One teams and Liberty Media themselves come out saying that they don't believe any of this and that none of them had anything to do with the situation and that the source in question is completely uncredible. Throughout the entire year, Mr. Suliam has been going back on his promise earlier in the year that he would not be getting involved in the commercial side of Formula One, and then proceeds to put out the expression of interest, then gets involved in the Andretti and General Motors situation. Then he talks about the Saudi deal, that that the $20 billion price tag for F1 was completely inflated and completely ridiculous. I don't call that stepping backwards and letting Formula One do its own thing. This, I reckon, this entire interference could be the nail in the coffin for Mr. Suliam's career. Because we are now getting rumblings here, folks, that Liberty Media is starting to get really, really sick and tired of all of this meddling and wild public outcries. They could now seriously consider breaking away. The last time that happening was back in 2009, when the likes of FOTA, all those different teams were looking into making their own series away from the likes of Bernie Eccleston because there were loads of interference from their part. They weren't getting enough prize money because Bernie was effectively keeping it itself for the Formula One management. That got resolved eventually, but that was the last time we had a serious rumbling about breaking away but now it's starting to happen again. This does tend to happen every 10 to 15 years or so, because I believe it happened in the 80s as well. And I don't think this would happen, but the fact that it's even being mentioned or speculated is something the FIA should take really seriously because Formula One, it is a money spinner. And it's proven to be so in the last few years, even more so. If Formula One decided to just break away, do their own thing and make money for themselves, the FIA would be losing a huge amount of their income. And yeah. Would they really want that? But at the same time, Liberty Media would have to consider doing everything themselves. Who is going to do all the scrutineering? Who is going to standardize all of the equipment that the FIA uses? There are lots of really big details that Liberty Media would need to consider and provide for themselves. So the FIA knows that Formula One would have to take this really seriously if they were going to break away. And then let's not forget the recent comments that Mr. Sulian said regarding Michael Massey saying that he had been through hell and that he would welcome him back if possible and if convenient with open arms. So he's rubbing Toto up the wrong way again. And ugh, after all of that stuff in 2021, my goodness, it's just, you just, you just feel like now it's personal. What would be the lesser of two evils? F1 leaving and not looking back or the president being conveniently told to, um, uh, take a break. But then I ran a poll on this with you. A sizable amount of you then deemed the FIA as being in the right, and I guess that's going along the lines of, well, if they've got nothing to hide, why are they worried? I understand that, because with the Lance Stroll stuff, it was quite feasible. There was visual evidence of Lance Stroll acting in an improper manner, and that should have been investigated. But right now, this single source, which doesn't really have a good track record and reputation, why? And, and why did the FIA handle this in such a public manner. But the way that this whole situation has been, this is just another example of Mr. Suliam, the FIA president, poking the F1 grizzly bear. And this time, this bear has reacted in a very angry manner. And I feel like Mr. Suliam might not come out of this unscathed. I don't think the FIA would want Formula One to break away. This has been talked about many times. There's this initial fracas and outward protest that these teams are going to break away and form their own championship. Then things get dealt with in private and then everything's hunky-dory again. As for business F1, oh boy. 
I think once this is all said and done and it turns out that nothing underhanded had gone down, they can probably expect Toto and Mercedes to come down hard on them and litigate them into oblivion. This was a very reactive situation and yet another example of the FIA president wanting to meddle with things immediately and with his own personal rhetoric, like he has done with the entire Andretti situation, then the whole thing with General Motors and then just Michael Massey, my my goodness. This is just yet another round of the FIA and Formula One tug of war that we've been seeing the entire year. And this is just this is just getting silly, folks. I just want this to be over and done with. If this was trying to divide and conquer the Formula One teams, all it's done now is galvanize the team against the FIA even more. Oops. But as you can tell, things are getting really frosty when it comes to the relationship between the organizing governing body of Formula One and Formula One themselves. If you'd like to understand more about the inner machinations of why Formula One and the FIA are at loggerheads with one another, you might want to watch this video next because things get very tense.